What's the word, y'all? We, we really need to sit down and have a heart to heart. What I'm about to say next will probably surprise some of y'all, but I need you to trust me in this. If you don't trust me in anything ever, trust me in this very next sentence, okay? The Chicago Bulls are going to be bad next season. Now, I know, I know, I know. Some of y'all thought this was going to be the year where the Bulls compete with the Boston Celtics to win the Eastern Conference 65 plus win season. Unfortunately, that's not in the cards for us this season. You already knew that? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not in here. Next year, <laughs> next year, make, no. Um, this team decided to make some decisions to kind of take a step back. And uh, it should be a, a bad year for the Chicago Bulls. But a bad year is a good year because our pick is top 10 protected. So go lose them games, Chicago. Go get Ace Bailey. Go get Cooper Flag. Lord knows we need it. And I've dropped so many videos about the Bulls over the last couple seasons. Um, me talking about how I hate that the front office does a very poor job of their asset management. So that's not what we're going to do in today's video. Other than giving you the clip notes version of that, every trade that we've done has either been too late or we got finessed. Yeah, either been too late or we got from this. There was no way you could have told me that we should have held on to Alex Caruso and DeMar DeRozan at this trade deadline. And what did we do? We traded away Alex Caruso on the last year of his deal to get in Josh Giddy. I don't hate that trade as much as I did when it first happened. We traded away DeMar DeRozan this offseason on a little signing trade with the Sacramento Kings. What did we get? We traded away DeMar DeRozan. What did we get in that trade? Two second round picks. The Spurs got a first round pick for taking Harrison Barnes. And we got two seconds? That's poor asset management. Even if we go back to the beginning of these guys' tenure, they traded Larry Marketing and a first-round pick for Derrick Jones Jr. Now, shout-out to DJJ. He just had a phenomenal run with the Dallas Mavericks, and now he's in L.A. But like every single trade these dudes have, have done, we've got finesse, and I don't even want to talk about the Vucevic trade now. <laughs> But uh, they've done a very poor job of asset management. Um, but again, if you want to hear me talk about that, go watch the two videos I dropped on the Josh Giddy trade because I think I break that down quite a bit. Instead of talking about the things that I hate about the Chicago Bulls, why don't we be optimistic today? Here are the three things I'm excited about for this upcoming Bulls season. And yes, I'm telling you right now, I am being completely biased here. I feel like a lot of the times on this channel, I put my bias cap to the side and I try to look at it, everything at face value as a neutral fan. Well, damn it, today, I'm going to be biased. The first thing I'm excited about is Kobe, um, Alex Jacoby White. I believe Kobe White should have won most improved player. Yeah, that's how biased we're going to get. No disrespect to Tyrese Max, he's a phenomenal player. I mean, everybody agrees that he's a better player than Kobe White. But I'm thinking about what the heart of this award has been or what it should be, damn it. I'm tired of the John Morant's the Tyrese Maxis, the Julius Randles winning the award. Nowadays, it's this guy was really good, and then he became great. And I'm not saying that's not progression, because Lord knows it is. Tyrese Maxey went from a really good, intriguing young player to a stud, a star like that. But my favorite awards are the dudes that went from, I mean, he, he, I, he might be a star in this league, to damn, that dude is nice. Larry Marketing, perfect example. He got traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. with a, We gave up a first-round pick to get rid of him. Then he was a throw-in to a Donovan Mitchell trade, and boom, he's an all-star. I love that. The Victor Oladipo, a former second overall pick, jumping around teams, and he finally finds his home in Indiana. Now he's a stud. I love that one. I think that Jimmy Butler's a good one. CJ McCollum is a good one. Giannis Dedekumpo is a good one. And all of those dudes happened in back-to-back -back years. Once upon a time, this award meant something, man. Nowadays, you look at the betting odds. Of, uh, Victor Wembanyama is the favorite to win most improved player. He's the most highly touted prospect we've seen since Braun. Like, what are we, what are we doing? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's just me being biased because my favorite player didn't win the damn award. But I'm just looking at it and the way it is going. In, in three years, Cooper Flag is going most improved player. Like, that's the way it's going right now. And I, I hate that part of the award. But last year, he was really close, right? Like, Kobe White missed it by a little over 10 votes. That's that's pretty impressive. He was right there on the tail. And I think it was because, like, one or two people left Kobe White off the ballot completely. Like, if he would have got those second, uh, even second place votes, he would have won. Again, it don't matter at the end of the day. I'm just being biased. But what? who is this guy that gave a, a vote to Tyrese Halliburton or Denny Adia? Come on, man. Them dudes aren't even really in contention. Even... Shea Gills Alexander got some votes. He's a stud. He was a stud. Like he averaged 30 last year. <laughs> he literally averaged 30 the year before. They like, you know what? He is the most improved player. What are we doing with this award? Kobe White should have won. Um, I love Kobe White's game. Um, he went from a guy that if you go watch my videos about the Bulls from two years ago before this jump, 
Call Me Why was a dude that I was always a fan of, but I thought that his role, based on what he has showed us throughout the first couple years of his career, is that he might end up being like a really, really good six man. And now, based on last season, he's like, oh my God, the Bulls might have a, a building block. That's how good he was last season. It was 19 points per game, five assists, four and a half rebounds, 44% uh, from the field, 47% from three. And that's even with the, the last two to three weeks of the season, he was ice cold. So like, and when he was gone, he was really, really good. But my favorite thing about Kobe White is also my least favorite thing about Kobe White. And that is that he is so very selfless. Kenny, how could that be a negative? The Bulls have done, and this is the previous regime. Kobe White is the previous regime draft pick. But the Bulls keep drafting these dudes that are so very team-oriented that they can become complacent with who they are as players. Like, Kobe White was on the team with Zach Levine, DeMar DeRose, Nikola Vucevic, and he was okay with just being the fourth fiddle. DeMar DeRose is a stud, a, a future Hall of Famer, probably. Nikola Vucevic is a former All-Star. Zach Levine, former All-Star. Y'all get, get y'all jobs, and I'll get my shots when they come. That's who he had become. And when Zach Levine went out with his injury, there's no surprise that with Kobe White getting those extra opportunities, he started to blossom. So his selflessness is so very cool because anytime any of his teammates do something incredible, he's the first person to celebrate. When Zach Levine did that big old comeback um, shot versus the Charlotte Hornets, who was the first person to jump on Zach Levine's back? It was, it was Kobe White. But because of that, he hasn't been as assertive as I want him to be. And I'm hoping that this season, with DeMar DeRozan no longer be on the roster, this is the year where he comes into camp and said, I am him and I'm going to be an all-star. Again, I don't know if he ever will be an all-star, but I want him with that mindset. And if he has that mindset going into camp and he showcases that on the court, the ceiling is, I don't know where. You remember coming out of college, they compared him to Gilbert Arenas. <laughs> that two seasons of Gilbert Arenas. And that's the player that I want. So Kobe White is my number one most exciting thing that I'm optimistic about when it comes to the Chicago Bulls. Number two, these are the splits of Ayo DeSumo. Now, if you have not been locked into Chicago Bulls basketball, I do not blame you. But for the guys that know, you know that the second half of the season, Ayo DeSumo was so good. He was so good. Like, I know people ain't locked in because people be sending me trades, Ayo DeSumo for Pat Connaughton. You ain't been locked in, and that's okay. But don't be hitting me up with those fake trades because you don't know how good this man was at the end of last season. So this is the way it goes. First two months of the season, he was 11 minutes per game, 18 minutes per game, 4.6 points. It was bad. Then let's get to around uh, February, March, April, where he decided to turn it up. Now, part of that was because he started to get real, real minutes because of all the injuries and stuff and because he played his way into the rotation. Where in this month, he averaged 16 points per game, Five assists, three rebounds on 50% from the field, 46% from three. Hello? Month after that, 16 game sample size, 50% from the field, 38% from three, and 17 points per game. And then April again, this is three months, but like, or three games. 17 points per game, 52% from the field, 46% from three. And if you look at the entire postseason or post All Star, 16.8 points per game, five assists, three and a half rebounds, 49% from the field, 38% from three. And I promise you, his impact was even deeper than these numbers. The unfortunate part of this is that because we traded for Josh Giddy and Zach Levine is back on the team, I assume we will not be getting these same minutes that he was getting. He won't be a starter anymore, at least until we trade Zach, if we trade Zach. So he's going to be a six man which I don't know if that's like his future role or where he wants to be as an NBA player, but he was so good that I'm so optimistic that he should be able to build off that success. And the last thing I'm excited about when it comes to the Chicago Bulls is that if you look at their projected starting lineup and you look at their depth, this team has no business not being a fast-paced team. The entirety of my life as a Bulls fan, I've seen one team play with pace. And when I say play with pace, I don't mean you got to be number one in the league. You don't have to be the Indiana Pacers of last year. I just want them to be top 10 at that. It's only happened one time in my life as a Bulls fan, right? Josh, Josh Giddy is at his best in the full court. Kobe White, speed, athleticism. Zach Levine, speed, athleticism. Patrick Williams, speed, athleticism. Now, Vucevic is a guy that you want to give him his touches every single game, yada, yada, yada. But even when we get to the bench, Lonzo Ball is one of the best fast break players over the last 10 years as a passer. Ayo Sumu got that. If you watch Miles Luzelis, and Summer League, he's got that. This team would be the, the most disappointing thing about this team. It wouldn't be if they lost all 82 games. It would be if they were not a fast-paced team. They have all of the markets to do that. Even if that means we turn the ball over at an all-time rate, play with pace. And that's it. Those, those are the things I'm excited about. Uh, there's the things I'm not so excited about, but those are the things. Let's be optimistic today, man. 
Um, the Josh Giddy trade is again, I look at it now differently, and maybe it was just me going through the stage of grief. I'm excited to have Josh Giddy on the team as a ball player, to have a, a superior playmaker, an A playmaker in the half court and in the full court. I'm very curious to see how Billy Donovan um, uses him on, on both things. Because, yes, a guy like Zach Levine and Kobe Wire, they're going to need the ball, not need the ball, but use the ball a lot to be effective. Like Kobe White's a great catch and shoot player, same thing with Zach Levine. But if you want them to be the best version of themselves, they need the ball to create. So, what is happening with Josh? Josh Giddy, but he doesn't have the ball. And I think that when you trade for Josh Giddy, the last year of his deal, right before he is restricted free agency, you want to see what you have in him by allowing him to have his best typical season, right? So what is exa what exactly does that look like? I don't really know. I also think stuff like this is fun because um, I'm a Zach Levine fan, right? So Zach Levine has vowed not to stunt the growth of the young players on the Chicago Bulls and is fully committed to team activities. That means a lot. I mean, it felt like the relationship between Zach and the Chicago Bulls were done and I, they shopped him around over the last season. That is no surprise. He has not had a team be really interested because he has his big old contract. But if he's ready to like be committed to the rebuild, I think that can A, increase his value um, because as we get deeper into the contract, the contract becomes better. For a trade, you know what I'm saying? And personally, I like watching Zach Levine. I, I like having a Chicago Bulls 8 jersey that means something. So if he is okay with it not being his team necessarily and being okay with the flow of all of this, I think it could go a very long way. The fact that he showed up to like these team, the team going to six flags a couple of days ago means a lot because he doesn't have to he doesn't have to do that anymore, right? Um, so that's that's kind of it. Nobody's expecting the Bulls to do anything special. But if you're a diehard Bulls fan, you have to find some level of optimism in all of this tragicness. Our pick is top 10 protected, so let's go out there and lose, lose, lose for Cooper Flag, please. Um, what is it? In the in the pooper for Cooper? I don't like that. A zag for Flag? I kind of like that. S something like that. Uh, yeah.